Hello, welcome to Real Life, the video diary that helps you to understand what life is like living with an electric unicycle. And here's what's coming up in this episode. So thank you for watching. You join me in this episode, not in Milton Keynes, but in the beautiful picturesque village in West Sussex of Horsted Keynes. And in this episode, I'm going to be shining a spotlight on the top five most ridiculous things that all unicycle riders do. Every one of us, you've either done these or you will do them. And these are the dirty little secrets that we all would prefer were kept hidden. These are the secrets that no other YouTube channel or forum is brave enough to discuss. But here on Wheel Life, we're going to get into it. And YouTube, I should point out, tells me that the people watching this video in the vast majority are men in your mid to late 40s. And therefore, quite frankly, people who should know better. But these are the dirty little secrets that all EUC riders would prefer we kept hidden. Let's find out what you're up to. <laughs> And here's the first one, and I guarantee you will have done this. And as I describe it to you, I want to ask yourself this fundamental question. Why? As you're riding along at about 20 miles an hour, with the wind whistling through what's left of your hair, you think, won't it look cool to pluck that bit of foliage from that tree? Okay, let me put that idea to bed straight away. This is not gonna make us look cool, but I think I know why we do it. And that's because people like me, we grew up in an era watching films like Back to the Future and The Karate Kid. And we believe that Mr. Maggie could pluck a fly out of the air with a pair of chopsticks. And a small part of our brain that's not keeping us balanced is thinking, this will be cool. If I could pluck this leaf from the tree, maybe I could be the next Karate Kid or the next Marty McFly. But the truth is, if you do manage to grab a leaf by chance, either you don't pull it free or you take half the tree with you. But listen guys, if you don't have a dream, how are you going to make your dream come true? Let's move on, shall we? Okay, so let's talk about the second item on this list. And this one's even more ridiculous than the last, but I guarantee some of you out there will have done this. And that is simply putting your head where it should just not go. And let me explain. Now, as you're riding along, you'll often see some branches hanging down from a tree. And in a moment of madness, you'll think to yourself, I bet my head will fit through that. Now you should know better, but you're wearing a crash helmet and that's because we're already doing an activity that is likely to crack your skull. But rather than that put you off, you pop on a crash helmet and carry on with your head cracking fun. And whenever the opportunity arises to up the odds of causing yourself some real serious injury, you'll take that opportunity. I don't know if we've got a part in our brains that's a bit like a cat and we think we've got whiskers and we can judge our width by using our head to get through a gap. You can tell people that have done it because they come home with injuries that look like they've lost a fight with a Bengal tiger and they've got bits of foliage stuck in their teeth. Let's move on. Right, time to move on. Now, I admit that with advancements in technology, this next one's less likely to happen, but it still will, and you'll do it if you've not done it already. And that is, when you pick up your unicycle, it's still powered on, you don't realise, and it starts to spin violently. Now, you know you should hold on to it until it maxes out, and you can put it down carefully. But you panic, and you put it down on the floor, and it's now become weaponised. It's like a sawmill. It, boom, it just burns through the carpet off of the floor, and leaves scorch marks. It's like a, a Jedi's dropped his lightsaber. And if you're lucky, it will stop there. If you're unlucky, it can start to thrash around the floor like a toddler smacked off his head on Harry Bow, and it can start to destroy things in about a quarter of a mile radius. The worst case uh, of mine ever of doing that was when I was with Ian Sampson 
on the thousand mile uh, ride we did a couple of years ago and it never made it to air this bit of clip because I dropped my monster in a hotel corridor it hit the floor and it bounced up it went up the wall it bounced on the corridor it left black marks up the wall scorch marks it, it burnt through the nylon carpet it just about set the smoke alarm off in about two corridors away it made a right mess um, yeah so we've all done that haven't we have we Okay, it's time to move on to the next one in our list. Now, there is a philosophy at play here, and that says that if a tree was to fall in a forest and there's nobody there to see it, does it make a sound? Now, the same can be said, if you fall off your unicycle and there's no one there to see it, did it really happen? But there's a law at play here, and that law says that if you're going to do something particularly daft, you can guarantee there's a group of people standing around to watch it happen, and these days capture it on camera and that is called sod's law but this is what happens and we've all done it if you haven't done it you will do it right so let me try and explain what happens with this one now as you go to set off what happens without realizing is you bring your foot up off the floor you accidentally close the foot plate. now if you're lucky you do realize what you've done and you can stop and discreetly sort it out worst case scenario though is you don't realize you've done it and with a warranted confidence, you go and put your foot down on a foot plate that's no longer there. You tend to wobble like the last drunk to leave a party and finish up face down in a hedge or on the pavement. As I said, usually with a crowd of onlookers with cameras out ready to upload it to fail army. Now, the most skilled of us can style it out, make it look like it was intended and ride off for a quarter of a mile on one leg while people applaud. But we've not all got the skills of a circus entertainer, so nine times out of the ten, you're going to end up in the dirt. I have. And finally, this is one we've all done as well, and that is that every time we see somebody on a bicycle, for us, we feel like we're in competition. A race is about to start. And it's even worse when you pull up against somebody at a traffic lights, and they're those people that are wearing nothing but head to toe lycra, and you can see every contour of their body, and nothing is left to the imagination, and they've got legs that would make Desert Orchid feel jealous. And as soon as those lights change, it's like the starting of a Grand Prix. I don't know what fires off this flare of competition in our brains, but we're going to have them. We're not going to lose. We're not going to be showing up on our £3,000 unicycle. We're going to have that guy on that bike. <laughs> and it's even worse at the end of a really long day. You've been out riding all day and you come across a pensioner on the open road. And you, you've hit that point where suddenly your power levels drop to 20% on the battery. And this old guy comes up past you chuckling because you can only go 15 miles an hour very embarrassing but we're all in competition against bikes it's only the people on the bikes that don't realize and therefore it's their fault well that's it thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you have then give me a thumbs up a like and a subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and please add your comments below as well tell me the things that you do that you're embarrassed about or that you think everyone else must do as well and please stay safe and i'll see you next time on real life